But long term, I think you can see that these sorts of effects might be really impairing and, um, and, and might outweigh any advantages that the drugs have in suppressing symptoms. However, the standard treatment for anyone who's had a psychotic episode, or at least more than one psychotic episode, is to put people on long-term treatment. And most people who've had this diagnosis end up on these drugs for years and years and years, and often for the whole of their lives. And that is based on studies that have taken people who are already on long-term treatment and randomized some of them to go on to placebo. And these studies find that the people who were put onto the placebo tablet have a higher rate of relapse. But there's other evidence that shows that people who, naturalistic evidence that's just followed people up, that shows that people who avoid taking long-term treatment seem to do better. So the, the dotted line here is the people with a diagnosis of schizophrenia Who've, who've not taken long-term treatment, and they have mu they're much more likely to make a full recovery. The trouble with these naturalistic follow-ups is that that might be at least partly due to the fact that the people who avoid long-term medication maybe have the less severe conditions, and the people who end up on it have the more severe conditions. So we really need some randomized controlled trials with proper long-term follow-up to work out whether long-term treatment is a good thing or not. And there's one of these um, that's been done in the Netherlands. It was done with people who had just had one episode of a psychotic disorder, and they were randomized either to continue on antipsychotic treatment or to have a gradual reduction under the supervision of their um, of their psychiatrist. And how do I go back? There we are. And um, the first follow up was at 18 months, and this follow up showed that at 18 months, the people who'd had the gradual reduction were still a bit more likely to relapse than the people who'd um, stayed on long term treatment. So the initial report from this study was just oh, it's the same as all the other studies. It confirms everyone should be on long term treatment. Um, they then did a seven-year follow-up. Uh, follow it took them seven years to get the money to do a long-term follow-up. And what they found is that at seven years, the relapse rates had equalized between the two groups. Um, so the group that were randomized to the gradual reduction, as you can see, initially, that's the black line, initially they have more relapses. They're less likely to remain well. Um, but then the two lines come together and actually the maintenance group do slightly worse by the end of the day. And then the other really important finding from this long-term follow-up was that the, the people who'd been randomized to have the antipsychotic reduction had a much higher chance of making a full social recovery. Their symptom levels were the same, but they were doing better. They were functioning at a higher level. So that suggests... And, and, and I think, you know, if we look at the, the alterations that antipsychotics produce, we can understand why that might be. It suggests that these alterations are not, you know, not helpful to people who are trying to go about their daily lives. Other reasons why we need to be very cautious about uh, uh, the prescription of these drugs, particularly long-term, is that they have really s serious adverse effects. Um, we know that they cause weight gain, they cause diabetes, they interfere with glucose metabolism and fat metabolism, particularly um, some, some of them more than others, like olanzapine, as I, as I said earlier, but they all do so to some extent. And then recently there's, there's evidence come out that they cause atrophy of the brain, essentially, re reduction of brain volume. Um, and this has been shown in studies with animals, where they've compared animals who've been put on uh, injections of antipsychotics with animals that have put on placebo injections. And after 18 months of treatment in this study with macaque monkeys, the brains of the monkeys who'd had the antipsychotic treatment were 8 to 11% lighter. So it's quite significant. Apparently, I met the man who did this study um, last summer, and apparently 18 months of the lifespan of a macaque monkey is equivalent to about six years of a human lifespan. Um, so it, it, it might take longer in, in a human to get to that level of atrophy. Nevertheless, uh, it's still quite significant. 
um, and, and looking at human studies, you can see there's a, a strong correlation between the amount of time that people have been taking these drugs and the amount of brain volume reduction that they're showing on MRI scans. We don't know whether, um, whether that brain volume reduction affects people's intellectual abilities. It's quite possible we can lose quite a lot of our brain without it mattering too much. Um, there are some studies that suggest that it is associated with some cognitive impairment. Some suggest that it's not. But we do know that long-term antipsychotics can cause cognitive impairment as part of this syndrome called tardive dyskinesia that they produce. This is a neurological syndrome where people get abnormal movements, um, but associated with the abnormal movements, they get some cognitive decline. Um, there's a Greek rock band called Tardive dyskinesia, I think. I discovered, and that's one of their album covers. <laughs> um, and tardive dyskinesia, it's often said to not be as common as it was before, but recent studies suggest that it does still occur quite frequently, um, particularly in older people. And the other, the other important thing to say about antipsychotics, the other major disadvantage, is that they are, most people find them very unpleasant drugs to take. Some people find them really, really intensely horrible. Um, so these are sort of typical quotes from people. They feel like they're in a drug prison, a living hell. Um, and, and the photograph is from a, a protest that, that people had about the, against the forced use of these drugs. So in, in people with psychosis and schizophrenia, I think... Um, I think sometimes there are grounds to use antipsychotics when people are acutely psychotic, but whether or not they're a good thing in long-term treatment really, to my mind, needs further research because they have such serious adverse effects. We really need to be certain as to whether there are any benefits. I um, was given some money from the British government to do a large, a, a large trial, a sort of larger version of the Dutch study to look at the long-term effects of maintenance antipsychotic treatment compared to a gradual reduction uh, regime. So I'm hoping in a few years to, to have some more answers to, to the pros and cons of long-term treatment.